Hi, today I'm going to share with you how I created this cute corgi pin. You are going to learn how to create this fluffy effect using carded wool and many other techniques. You can download this project overview using the link I have added to the description of this video. It has a lovely illustration of this project as well as all the sizing, including height of the corgi bum bum. As you can see, it's quite 3D here. You can also download these funny looking templates. You will notice we have three of them. We will use one for the outline, so cut it out just like it is. Then cut up the other one and we will be using just the bum bum part and the head, as you can see here. And you have the spare one just in case something goes wrong. You're going to need a felt sheet that can fit our pin. I suggest you use brush felting mat. I have one linked in the description. I will leave details about the needles I'm using throughout this video on the upper right corner. It's 38 twisted stars, 40 triangles and some multi-needle tools. If you have corgi brown wool around your house, that's great. I don't, so I'm going to make a mix from this reddish brown and caramel tone. And I do love the effect of this mix. I'm using white carded wool for the base of the pin as well as for the fluffy butt. Tiny amounts of black, you can use either carded or rowing. And I added some pink to the ears, but it's completely optional. Scissors are really important in this project. We will be cutting a lot and I'm using multiple sizes. I suggest you use 3mm eyes, but you can also use beads. To draw on the felt piece, we are going to use Sharpie or pen. Now let's start. Take your template and draw the outline of the corgi on your felt piece. Now take your head cutout and align it to your outline, just like this. Now draw the line for the head. Let's do the same for the bum bum. You can connect the circles like this. As the head and the butt are more 3D than the rest of the body, there tend to be a weak point in this little section here, so we are first securing it with some additional wool. So I'm taking a piece of white carded wool and folding it so it's easier to control and pelting it down, overlapping the lower line of the head a bit. Remember that you can always turn your piece in another direction, so it's easier to follow the lines. I'm adding a bit more wool where necessary, just to create about 1-2 to two millimeters thick layer of wool. Now take another bit and place it over the neck and back area, overlapping the wool you just added to the head a tiny bit. When the base is done, we can move on to the paws. I suggest you start with the paws as they are quite flat and the bum bum part is a bit higher. So it will cover the paws a bit and will create some weird angles for your needle if you do it another way around. I'm taking a piece of wool and folding it as you just saw, placing it on the paw and slowly and really carefully felting it down. Make sure you follow the lines we just draw. If you have too much wool, you can felt it down on the bum bum part or just cut it off. Our goal here is to create around 2 mm high layer of wool. I suggest you work with tiny pieces and add some more when needed. Now do the same for the other paw and felt it down until it's flat. Before I create the domes for the bum bum, let's add some corgi brown to the neck and back part. First I have to create the blend, so I'm taking some caramel colored wool and some more reddish brown. As you can see my brown is in tops, not carded, so I'm cutting it up to make the staple length match the carded wool a bit more. Then I mix those wools a bit using my fingers. That makes carding way easier and using my hand carders I mix the tones as well as I can. I 
Again, just taking tiny pieces and adding more if needed. I'm laying the color down on the neck and back part and felting it. Our goal is just to make it flat. And now to the fun part. First, we are going to create two domes that are approximately 1.5 centimeters high. I think the most easiest way to do it is to create a ball using your carded white wool and placing it on the shape. Start small, then add some more until you feel like the wool could be around the size you need. Again, you can always add some more later. It's easier to felt it down using just a single needle and I'm pointing it towards the center for most of the time. Watch your fingers and wear finger guards if needed. Remember that the direction of your needle is determining the shape, so just keep in mind that we are creating dome, point it towards the center and you will achieve it easily. Turning your work around will help you to see the shape from all sides. Here is my dome and I feel like I need to add a bit more wool here. Repeat the process to the other side. When that's done, it's time to add the back. We will add a bit of wool. We will add a bit of wool up here just to connect those two domes and create this back piece. You can use your corgi brown if you have plenty of it. I don't, so I will use my white carded wool. Starting small again, adding a tiny bit of wool up there and felting it down. It's actually way easier to work upside down. Make sure you do not disturb the iconic peachy shape of Corgi Bum. Connect the domes just at the upper third. Don't go too low with adding wool and stabbing it down. It's important to keep the separation between the sides. And here is the result. And now it's time to add the fluff. We will cover most of the bum bum with white carded wool. We will create fur effect, but it will be just one to two millimeters long. Try to pull your carded wool at the staple length, just a tiny bit like this. Comb it straight with your hands. And then I like to cut it in half as we will need just a short, short fur. Now you take a tiny piece like this, do not disturb the direction of the fiber and place it at the lowest part of one of the domes. Now take your needle and felt this wool down in a straight line in the middle of the fiber. It's like creating a seam. I learned this fur coat technique from Felts by Philippa. I will link one of her videos down below. As you can see, I'm holding my wool still and felting in a straight line for quite some time to secure all of the fiber. When it's really secure, I can fold the lower part of the fiber up and work on the seam this way too. Then fold it over and work from the upper side. Make sure you are felting just the seam and don't go all over the wool. When this bit is done, I'm just cutting off some excess wool. We will do a proper trimming later. I just like to get rid of it so it doesn't mess my process. Don't be afraid to cut your wool if you feel like it, because you can always use those bits later on. Now I'm just repeating the process and creating another line above the previous one. We can chat a bit while you watch me work. Maybe you are questioning why am I not using tops for this? Well, technically I could, but it would take a bit more work as the fibers are all straight. Carded wool has been processed in a way that makes it a bit frizzy, so it's way easier to create this fluffy effect and it takes much less work. Another idea would be to use reverse needle. So after creating the domes, we would use this needle to pull some fiber out of them. Although it looks nice and feels way faster than this process, the fiber after this process is really prone to felting, so 
your pin will not look so nice in a really short time. Now back to the project. As you can see, the fluff is coming up beautifully and we need to cover this bum bum to up here approximately. You can use our project template or guide to see um, the area. I have marked it like this. When you are closer to the upper part, it makes sense to turn your project around and it will make it more accessible. Before we move on, I would like to share with you what can you do in case you have accidentally created a bold spot. Fold the fluff away on both sides so you can easily access the groove. Now place the wool, making sure that the middle part of it is just above the groove. And now carefully felt it down like we did before, using this groove as your guide where to place this seam line. So as you can see, it's nothing to worry about. And sometimes just one addition of the wool is not enough, so maybe you will need to add another layer. Here we have one side done. It looks quite silly right now. Now just repeat it on the other side. Boom, a magic trick. <laughs> Okay, now I'm using a tool from Clover. It's optional and you can comb this wool just using your fingers or any tiny comb you have, but I happen to have this tool. So I will link it in the description of this video. I'm combing the fluff to create the separation between the domes. And now it's time to do the trimming. Our goal here is to create the dome shape we had before, um, just leaving a tiny bit of fluff on there just one to two millimeters long. Best tips I could give you is to go slow, cut tiny amounts at a time and look at your piece from all sides. I'm making sure the blades of my scissors are following the dome shape, so it's way easier and faster to create the perfect round bum bum. I also find that I like to use embroidery scissors for this. I almost feel like pet groomer in those corgi videos. As you can see, after some cutting, we can see the feet again. And it's really important to work on the middle part to restore this iconic peachy shape we are talking about here. You can of course take your pin off the mat and it will give you more angles to cut from. And you can bend the felt sheet and even some parts of your corgi. Now this side is almost finished. We are having this tiny tiny fluff just about 2 millimeters long. Now repeat it on the other side. You can even fold your felt like this and it will help you with the shaping a lot. And now it's time to add color to the back and neck and a tiny tail. For me, it's easier to work with my project upside down. I'm taking tiny pieces of corgi colored wool and felting it down onto the back. First layer I felt quite firmly and then I add another layer and leave it way fluffier. Pull tiny amount of this brown wool down as a tail but don't felt it down completely. We need to secure it, but still leave it quite fluffy to create this adorable tail effect. Don't forget to look at your project from all sides, and maybe you have to add some more wool somewhere. You can flatten the back if needed by felting it down, holding your needle towards the back. Now we can work on the face. Take the head template we used before and just poke through the paper using coarse needle to mark the nose. And now I'm pelting down some tiny bits of white wool here to make it more pronounced. To blend it with the rest of the face more seamlessly, I'm taking piece of wool and wrapping around the base of the nose. And then just felting it down. 
When you are adding the brown spots to the face, it's important for you to remember that our corgi is looking at us over his shoulder. So the axis of the face is going like this. You can Google some corgi pictures for reference, but basically I'm adding brown on the both sides and leaving white line in the middle for mine. And now let's create the nose. I'm taking black wool and felting the triangle on the highest point of the muzzle. And again, it's important to keep in mind the axis of the face. Then we need to create a black line that goes from the nose to the mouth. I'm using the wool that is left over from felting the nose. Add curved black line for the mouth. Now cut your pin out of the felt sheet. It's almost ready! Now let's add the eyes. I'm marking the spots using coarse needle. And as I'm using black beads for the eyes, I need to do some sewing. But if you have ready-made eyes, then you just glue them in. I don't have much of my corgi brown blend left, so I will use this caramel tone instead for the ears, but nobody will notice it. I'm working on the both ears at the same time, just laying some pieces of wool on my foam. They are slightly bigger than the ears I have planned. Just felt them flat for a bit and start folding the sides to create triangle. You can refine the shape by taking single needle and pointing it towards the edge while felting. Wear finger guards if necessary. I'm also refining only two sides of my triangles because the third one will be used for attaching. Felt down tiniest bit of white in the middle of your triangle. I also like to add just a teeny tiny bit of pink, but it's completely optional. To attach the ears, I decide on the placement, then I turn my corgi around and felt one ear down. Then just repeat the process for the other one. Now look at this cute corgi butt. We made it! Now you just have to add your pin and backing. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave them in the comment section. And you can also find me on my Instagram, Facebook or TikTok. And can't wait to see all those cute corgis popping up in your socials. See you in my next one. Bye!